Welcome back everyone to TNO The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and which we are playing as Samara. Very cool. In the halls of power though. It had been a welcome relief to leave the frontiers for an extended trip to Samara. Balashov was used to permissions being granted in muddy bad word holes with terrible alcohol and even worse brothels. Oh no. His presence in Samara, however, would not be for R and R. With the rumbles of a new set of wars in Western Russia, almost every other officer that could make the trip had been invited to give up, give their say in a final leadership conference. The officers' committee claimed that every officer's opinion would be taken into account. The officers' committee claimed a lot of things. <clears throat> the most pressing topic was on everyone's lips. Who would succeed Vlasov as chairman? Balashov did not really care. He suspected few others did. Far from the little games played in Samara, the vast majority of the ROA spent most of its time patrolling, training, and keeping an eye out on the locals. None of them knew what the future would bring. Making such plans was a hobby of Samara's elite clique. Balashov had been 22 when the Germans drafted him. 25 when they had forced him at gunpoint to leave his fiancée and fight the communists. He was now 35. He had no idea what would become of his fiancée, his children. He had long since given up on returning home. Perhaps the candidates to succeed Vlasov might convince him to keep hope again. Most likely enough, though. Cool. Throwing so no manpower. And we are chasing the setting sun. The day's conferences had ended. Balashov and a few other officers from the district had settled. <clears throat> on a local bar to get some refreshments. After a day of talking, like most of the city of Samara for the Congress, the establishment was filled to the brim with men of the ROA. In one corner, Balashov recognized one of Zekova democracy proponents had given an impassioned speech. The speaker waved Balashov and his friends over, offering them seats next to his own group of officers. Without much thought, Balashov headed towards a chair, signaling to the barman for a drink. Why not spend the evening with the Zekovits? Why not? In the person, the pro-democracy speaker was much more personable than Balashov had expected. A colonel from the border region with the Orenburg communes, the man was an old hand of the West Russian War. Conversations drifted from topic to topic, memories of the desperate struggle against the WRRF, the famous operation to secure the southeastern territories from bandits in the aftermath of the front's collapse. And the colonel's assignment was in quiet so southeast sector. It was because he had helped make it quiet. <coughs> so, what's an old hand like you doing with Zikov and his and his jumped-up peasants turned a junior officer. Don't you have better things to do than help the, that fool? One of Balashov's comrade asked, his tongue loosened by the drink. The colonel's drinking friend's glass flashed grimaces, but the colonel himself shrugged. When he crushed the bandits, the locals put in the, in the southeast were grateful. After decades of pointless struggle in the Red Army, then the ROA, it felt nice, you know? Fighting for something. Zykov's a strange man, but he was one with a plan. Like me, he dreamt of going west. Freeing Muscovine, I did not know if my hometown will ever come back. Uh, welcome me back, but I can get buried next to my ancestors. That's one of the things that Germans won't have taken from me. The colonel finishes drink. Perhaps the ROA too will set in the West. <clears throat> my apologies, my cat Binky wanted to leave the room. Ugh, he didn't want to join us as we're playing as a good old Samada. To the committee. The Konar and its leading officers have fought hard to break the communist menace. Our men bravely led the spear into the heart of the resurgent Soviet Union. Having Have the people been grateful to us for saving them from renewed Bolshevism? Not for an instant. Have the Germans done anything but throw us a bone before kicking us back into the kennel? In their arrogance, they call us up humans once, one moment before begging us to guard the, the borders of the next. <clears throat> These are hard times in Russia, and they call for hard men. The Russian army of national liberation will lead Russia into its renewal. Those strong enough to will follow us as soldiers and generals will be gladly be accepted. The others are not worth the dirt they stand on. Our leader Vlasov has no, can't have no successor but Bonachenko. Well, we'll see about that. <clears throat> so we got a couple comments. Oh, there goes my voice again. We have a couple comments to go through. And I didn't say it yesterday, but if... If I did, really didn't say it yesterday, uh, what we're currently playing on is Cutting Room Floor Patch G. Just to let you guys know if you were interested in knowing about what we were doing. Uh, we'll try it against these guys. We'll see what happens with these folks. <clears throat> we have 19 political power, and we almost have 20. Average civ civilian morale, which actually is pretty good. If you look over here, where is it? Average civilian mo morale, not too bad. That's better than yesterday because now we've got 10% more political power to work with, so it could be a lot, lot worse. To the Reich. Woe to the conquered. Twice now, the Russian people have weakly clung to their Bolsheviks' masters, losing both time to the German war machine. The Konar fought bravely in the West Russian war and was an instrumental in breaking the morale of the cowardly communist hordes. Now, beyond our border, the left is plot. In this, they've joined, they, they are joined by the democratic rabble and the Tsarist relics. Russia has received nothing from these failed regimes but tears, blood, and ash. It is indeed the time for strong men, and the Germans are strong. We must aid them in our quest to bring forth a new era. The foreign Judeo-Bolsheviks and their traitors to compasses will hang, and from their bodies a new state will be built. Oktana and his associates will enact this future. A kindred spirit. In theory, the day's topic was merely the best way to administer newly liberated areas. A young captain has made a passionate speech about collaboration 
cooperation in partnership with local civilians. But the next officer to speak was the commander Bunachenko, the usual mouthpiece of the upper echelon of the officers' committee. Balashov was less interested in Bunachenko's speech than in the man himself. After all, the general's arguments were the usual rhetoric about the dangers of giving too much power to the masses. It was a fine refutation delivered with a general hint of a Ukrainian accent. No, Balashov was more interested in the officers' committee's mouthpiece than in his message. Bonachenko's grim expression reminded Balashov of his and his men. Uh, an unhappy determination, a decade of sorrows and losses, the only time the general's eyes lit up was when he mentioned the hated communists and the Germans that had stolen their future. Commander Bonachenko was a hard man, one whom ba Balashov would gladly follow into battle. The only mystery left unresolved in Balashov's mind was about D Bonachenko's dreams. Would such a man remain the officer's committee's puppet like Balashov had become, or would he use his status as chairman to be something more? Perhaps there's some life in him. Oh, but we should have done the others first, and then should have done Zakov, because that's where we are going. So, let's go on industrial equipment as well. Initiate a raid, and corruption is only ten. I'm not too worried about that, even though we could decrease it right now, anyways. But whatever, uh, increase corruption. Civilian morale. Oh, you know what? But increase corruption by a small amount. Increase civilian morale by a large amount. So with thirty, oh, that's not bad. Is average fifteen? Not bad. Not bad, I'd say. They refuse tribute. So be it. Immediately begin the assault. And we currently have 15, so that's like almost nothing for us. So, uh, smuggle and anti tank. Uh, I'm going to go and do that. It's negligible just because we, if we can get some anti tank every so often, that's actually really probably pretty darn nice. The other road. Oh boy, now they're throwing in more soldiers. That's not good. Balashov hitched a ride on a troop truck back home with the fellow officers. A few discussed the leadership conference. Most of the others discussed their most frequent acquisition from the capital. Booze, tobacco, a few odd ends. One of the lieutenants showed off his new toy, a sleek Voltaire PPK pistol to replace the aging P-38 pistol being given up uh, upon recruiting recruitment into the ROA. Many of the men in the truck had significantly better haul than their meager salary should have allowed. Balashov thought of the friendly officers in the capital's associates of Commander Oktan. The trade with Muscovy was an entire organization all of its own, and its members were some of the richest and most generous of the ROA. At the leadership conference, they too had argued for the boss as successor to Vlasov. They rallied against Zykov's foolish idealism, and against Bunachenko's lethargic puppeteers in the officers' committee. The ROA was strong. Should it not have had a strong leader? One able to provide for the soldiers and officers? One able to enforce discipline, order, and progress throughout Russia? At least so Akhtan's proxies had talked during the conference. They talked, and they had given out much goodies. It paid to be friendly with men that held so many contacts. Balashov had not taken anything from these men yet. But the option remained on his mind. They can ease the pain. Alright, so negligible. Uh, I would like to decrease corruption by a large amount. Well, I don't want to do that one though. Increase corruption by a medium amount. Well, more infantry equipment, increase corruption, military morale. And I want to wait till we get the other one again, so we'll wait. And who shall have last off? So, or who shall stand besides Vlasov? The factions have made their cases. For some, this was accomplished through sp speeches to the assembled officers and soldiers. For others, it was through de demonstrations more practical work. Three visions of our missions have now made their case and argued for the methods. It is now the time to decide who shall stand beside Vlasov and earn a place in history as successor to the future people, or future liberator of all Russian peoples. Actually, right now, because we have no manpower, I'm going to go ahead and close this one. I want... Ooh, group oversight. By a small amount. Uh, which one was it? Consumer goods, infrastructures, okay. This one's usually pretty good to do, but we don't have the political power. Since this is a unique mechanic for us, I think, smuggling operations, so we're just going to keep doing that one. Uh, what do we have? I'll probably do this one. It's not very much. It's 75 political power for 1,000 manpower. Is that? That's not really worth it. Hey, we actually still might win here, maybe. We do have trucks, which is kind of nice. Smuggling shipment, great. In a few days, we get 50 things of infantry equipment and 50 things of anti-tank, which actually will be very, very helpful. We definitely need more guns. Anti-tank is looking actually relatively okay. Hmm. Yeah, this one is... How much manpower do they have? Five... Oh, that's like 5,000. That's not good. Maybe we should have realized that before uh, we went to war. But regardless, we've got to get coffee here. And someone recommends that I do... Uh, go the, down the Akhtan and Bonachenko route. I probably will. I, I promise I will go down there eventually. I chose Samara just because earlier on, because uh, I, I want to go down those other routes later on as well. So, Vlasov's secret speech. The day Vlasov has reluctantly made what will in time be known as Vlasov's secret speech to his most senior and long-standing officers in the ROA, announcing his successor. It's been a well-known if unspoken fact that the aging chairman has not been in good temperament recently. Many have long expected this day to come. One of Vlasov's aides attended him as he prepared his final speech, announcing the chairman's successor within the hour. He was expected by the officer committee 15 minutes ago for a standard meeting before the announcement, but he hadn't been bothered attending. The aide, one of the few allowed in the chair room, silently observed the old marshal 
Marshall's brow was furrowed, just in spite of the rather chilly temperatures of the office that seemed that his face glistened with sweat. He was intensely staring at the script, scribbled by hand onto a piece of paper, not reading it or writing it, just stirring. The A checked his watch. Sir, I... He tried to hurry the marshal along, well familiar with the punishment he may receive for Vlasov being late of his own accord. Uh, <clears throat> Vlasov, however, put up his hand as soon as the aide spoke, and silently terminating the aide's hope to get things moving. The marshal stood up slowly and delicately folded the piece of paper up into his pocket. Shall we ask his aide? Yes, sir, the aide responded. The old marshal stood in front of the office, uh, in front of his officers, some of them having been with him since the early days of RSOA. He looked at all of them, seeing familiar faces, but for the first time, more than a few faces that he didn't recognize. Could they be new? Vlasov asked himself, the silence in the room deadened as, it, as all looked to him and waited. Or had he simply forgotten who they were? Smiling, Vlasov looked down at the piece of paper and spoke at last. As you all know, I'm not getting any younger. It's time for me to announce a formal successor to the Russian Liberation Army. Chairman position. And for this, I've chosen Zykov for his skills. Nice. The Democratic successor. Uh... <sighs> Milevti Alexandrovich Zekov. The name bounced around the aide's head. Vlasov had been long silent about a potential political successor for him in the case of his death or incapacitation. However, it was obvious to everyone that, who was anyone in the ROA that the chairman wasn't getting any younger. But Zykov was certainly an unorthodox choice. Vlasov had convened an emergency meeting of all of the aides nearly half an hour ago to make a preliminary announcement to them, but the announcement had turned into a discussion. The move was a shock to a number of more conservative aides who thought the transition to Zykov would be a disaster. Truthfully, Vlasov was an alright boss. An aide never had to fear reprisals for a small mistakes like they did under many other senior officers. Now, we're free to express our opinions there so as long as they were respectful. Lu Luchenko, one of the er aides' peers, a voice says, Zakov's gone as far as proposing their institution of democracy, but the people know nothing of democracy. The most don't care. Will they even understand what it, that would mean? I worry that all we have worked to build would evolve into the chaos that we've heard is going on in the Sixtif Guard. The field marshal retorted in a entire but firm tone. Zakov wants... Uh, Zakov may want democracy, Luchenko, but we have not been working towards a free Russia. What Russia is free is... What Russia is free but does not allow the people freedom? There was silence for a bit. After another aide, one of Luchenko's good friends, finally spoke up. But if I may, there are so so many, so many doubts about some of the staff about the about the staff which have about Zykov's true intentions. Even if he were to assume power after you, the aide seemed to stumble. Some worried that he doesn't even believe in democracy and will attempt to use it as personal power tool. Vlasov grimaced briefly. It was clear that it had been a thought that had crossed his mind. His true intentions may be ambiguous. That may be true, but it never but it never leaves the room. Even if it was not the right to restore. Even if he was not to restore democracy, I believe in his ability to restore hope, and right now, that's what we need the most. We need to give the Russian people hope. There was a pause. Vlasov was far from a talented orator, but all were aware of the poor opinion of this organization, with most of the subjects had ruled. Zakov had always been a pro propagandist. The demist Vlasov barked. Back to work. Uh, maybe, man, that text seemed a little clunky, but maybe that's just me. It's probably just me, speaking really too quickly. Rebutting Samara. Cool. Wow, that's a long, very tall line. Even though we were considered as significant assets by our benefactors to the West, we were not spared of the terror bombing that well, the Luftwaffe conducted indiscriminately for years. Our cities, factories, and homes were destroyed by the bombing runs being rebuilt only to be hit again. The people of Samara have suffered for many years with no end of the bombings in the horizon. However, there is hope. The Reich had fallen into chaos and disarray, and the Luftwaffe has got more urgent business to do than target practice on Russian villages. Now it is time to rebuild the city and all our territories as well. Houses, factories, and infrastructure like the roads will be repaired or built to serve the people tomorrow. Hopefully this will show the people how much the KONR cares for them and what they will do for them. Popular support is, after all, key to keeping in control. Hopefully we can meet her. My goodness. I hope we can. A lack of officers. Any successful army requires a great deal of officers. Only the recently in years in Samara. I've seen a junior officers grow, not so junior. The men that fought in the West Russian War, the former Red Army POWs, Opportunists, whites, and fascist emigrants have now spent most of the decade with us holed up in Samara. Years of promotion, attrition, and desertion of unbalanced or officer pool, especially at the junior level. Our army is now dangerously top-heavy and needs a new blood to fill out its command structure. Fortunately, local recruits form a satisfactory pool of potential officers. The only issue is that the years of sitting around have begun polarizing the soldiers into three different groups. Some of the more idealistic recruits follow Zykov's faction and argue that ROA should live up to its promise of liberation and democracy. In contrast, a group of black market smugglers and hardline fascists have coalesced around General Oktan's promises of a strong Russia where the soldiers are fully respected. In between these two hands, officers committee tries to maintain the status quo by recruiting dutiful and apolitical men who share Bunachenko's apathy and desire to see the junta's structure endure until the situation is changed. The composition the position of officers we choose will help determine the direction the ROA takes. It would be wise to be prudent in our selection of ROA's next generation. Time to make decisions about this. Oh, look at that. That's not good. Oh, boy. My apologies. I had to crack my back. And cool. And we actually did win eventually. If you like to read about the successful right, go right ahead. Oh, crud. Uh, decrease in officers? 
I thought Samara all was supposed to be relatively easy to play. Oh boy. Increase in officers. Oh no, 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 no. Why do you pay me so? That's ah, not terrible. 200% organization is probably the worst one there. But if you like to read about treasure, please go right ahead. Ah, at least we get political power. That's actually pretty nice then. That was actually pretty helpful. <clears throat> a thousand manpower. It's not really worth it. I'd like to get through this stuff as quickly as possible. Improve oversight. Uh, you know what? I want to kind of see how the next level of corruption. If I wanted to get a 30, it'd probably go to minuscule or something like that. And I don't know how long we're going to be able to have these smuggling operations either. So we might want to be prepared. Let's close that one out for now. Mm, increased corruption. Medium. What is the morale like of our soldiers? Low military morale. Less recruitable population. Factor, 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 war support. Uh, that's still not really terrible. Yeah, it's 5% recruitable, recruitable population that's gone. But it's really not that bad. You get more guns every month. By large. You know what? Let's try, I want to see what else we can get. So it's... Oh, wow. It's average. Corruption. Where's corruption? Turncoat general, of course. German, da, 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 da. German bootlickers. We need to get rid of that, too. Okay, so that hurts us a little bit more, but it's still not terrible. All right, so political campaign. I would like... A thousand just not worth it. I want to get through this stuff. Increase... Greatly increase ROA loyalty. It's a, currently disloyal to Zykov. Lead to a small decrease in officers. Higher pay just seems like the thing to do. Decrease civilian morale. Oh, I don't like that. Increase corruption. I'm going to do this one. There we go. Didn't do anything. Slightly decrease loyalty. Increase in officers. I'm going to do this one too. Okay, I did nothing. Wow, that does not feel good. <laughs> that did not feel good. The reason of Samara, economic readiness. All right, the committee plan. Maybe Zekov plan, officer plan. Ooh, which one do we want to do? Ooh, that's better guns. I like getting more guns. Not better guns, but more guns. Planes are nice. Put women to work. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. I kind of like that. Put women in the factories. Good idea. Mm, that stuff is okay. And the Zekov plan developed the city. Uh, there's nothing here for societal development. And I want to maximize civilian de development as fast as possible. So what we'll do the officer plan. Oh, wait, no, we can't. Oh, that sucks. Octan has to win the issue. And then Budachinko has to win the power struggle. I guess the Zekov plan is what we got to do then. Darn it, I wanted to do put women to work. Industry is the backbone of any modern nation. Without it, we cannot have a good standard of life or development or, mil or develop our military. Both vital parts of the Russian state. Mutually, Zykov, a performance within the co-owner's ranks, has proposed, proposed an ambitious economic plan that, if it succeeds, it could bring some modern industry to a new level. Zykov has laid plans for the construction of new factories along their territories, using investment from the civilian sector that will hopefully have trust in an economy to empower the military-industrial complex of our military. It's a, it is a sound plan, and we hope it will be quite helpful for our struggling economy. Should be kind of nice. And then, the voice of reason. Oh, so we basically do, do the Zykov, Zykov plan and then do this stuff. Dealing with the general, huh? Oh, let's speak with Bonachenko. Bureaucratic allies. Oh, increased military morale. That's kind of cool. All right, what do we have over here? And can we scavenge for loot yet? Yeah, yes, we can. Improve oversight by a small amount. I'm looking for the one that has 40. Ooh, we just got some more stuff, didn't we? Nice. Simru Gok wins elections. Very cool. Good job, Simru Gok. And we've got two months for that, so it doesn't even matter. Hopefully we get those other stuff back again. I'm going to close this one since we don't really need it for now. 20. Anything up north? No. Bribe the officers. I want to lower. Corruption. Actually, what do we get, everyone? 50-50. Support motorized. Bribe the officers. Smuggling efforts. Discourage fraternization. Scale it down. Huh. Smuggle it more infantry equipment. So, oh, we can get support equipment. That's not bad. Luxury goods for the soldiers. Increase military morale by a bunch. Increase corruption by a small amount. Increase military morale by a bunch. Increase military morale by a medium amount. Food for the civilians by a large amount. I kind of don't mind doing that one. We're, we're already at average, so let's try that one. Hey, we got high. There we go. Look at that. We got high. Hey, we got even more political power and stability because of that. Nice. We get what a day. That's actually pretty good, I'd say. 
All right, so we could probably do the voice of reason next. In the ensuing political confrontation, Mitel Zaikov, the ideological voice of the committee and the passionate voice for democracy, achieved the goodwill of the venerable chairman Vlasov and the rose to the ranks of the second man in the Konar. Few expected such a contentious fight to become the designated heir to Vlasov, but it seems that his radical ideas of an appeal to the people have brought the head propagandist of Samara for far more weight to, bid for, to his bid for power than his enemies could have expected. Of course, the favor of the old general is not enough to protect Zakov from attacks by rivaling factions. Many members of the Konar, especially the more conservative members of Oktan's faction, <clears throat> faction, have barely concealed their contempt for the daydreaming demagogue. The usual apolitical Bunachenko faction have unusually also expressed dismay at Zakov's election. The new deputy chairman is yet to prove his worth, but no matter what it takes, Zakov will make every effort to accomplish the goals the Russian liberation movement was founded upon. The overthrowing of tyranny, wherever it may be, and the creation of a new free Russia, one without Bolsheviks and any exploiters of Russian blood. Guns, tears, bullets, and bread. Now, actually, maybe we have to get through this stuff first. Economic readiness. And then we'll be able to go there, so. So, we'll come back to this, and then you can read it again if you'd like. Zakov and Samutin stood over the maps of Samara. The shadow bowl formers of... Shadow forms of officers and industrials skirting the light of the bulb dangling from the ceiling. The map was covered in pen, future factories marked out, and forest marked for clearance. Well, said Leonid Samutin at last, What do you think? Zakov nodded the limited shine, light shining on his balding head like a moonlight on a murky pond. This is excellent work, Leonid, replied the warlord of Samara. Factories for civilian goods, auto plants, gun manufacturers, industrialized farms. This is a plan of genius. Samutin almost blushed at his praise, but instead produced a ledger. Uh, the private donations have come in. Combined with their own funds, it should be more than enough to cover the cost of construction. Zykov cocked an eyebrow. And just how generous were these do donors? Leonid sniffed and looked almost guiltily around the room. More than enough, sir, and I assure you most of the funds were given willingly. Uh, other uh, <clears throat> means were used to obtain the rest. Zykov smiled and waved away the economic minister's concerns. What we have today will give back to them tomorrow from food, security, and employment. The industrialists and officers were welcomed to the light, and the real nuts and bolts of industrialization were introduced, turning money into guns. We shall, uh, creating an armed industry. How about that one? Because we need more guns. We really do. Ever since the formation of our state, right on the German frontier, the Reich has been our main and only benefactor. They have pro provided us with weapons and supplies not to unify Russia, but to remain loyal and cause trouble. However, we cannot remain dependent on them for long. It will finally... It is finally time to work to achieve autarky. The Russian war industry shall be rebuilt far better than the Bukharan years. It will become the driving force beyond the reunification of the country under no one but us. Uh, let's see. Uh, I need to get to other comments. Also, if you're wondering about why I chose the background or just the, the thumbnail for this uh, campaign itself. Ooh, I want to do this one. Definitely do want to do this one. It's because I believe that the background is the current flag for the real life city of Samara, the region of Samara, the city of Samara. So that's why I chose that the color scheme, which looks ra radically different from what's actually in game. I tried to use this flagging for the thumbnail. It just didn't, it looked okay. It, it didn't look great, but I think for future campaigns, I might use it. So just to let you guys know. Uh, oh, visitor facilities, uh, schools, research facilities, or workers. Well, we definitely need schools. Poverty rate is still going down, which is not good. Agriculture, ex expertise. So workers, so that's really expertise. I want to do the research rate, schools. And by research rate, I mean school stuff. So after that, we'll be creating an arms industry. And weapons, yeah, let's grab some weapons. Soon our army will begin a campaign aiming to reunify the Russian lands under one banner to ensure that this campaign is a success. A further expansion of the arms industry is highly important. More factories will be built with the resources we have dedicated not to civilian goods, but to producing any kind of military equipment which will be quickly funneled to our armed forces. Guns, tanks, artillery, whatever is needed for our army will be produced in this new rapidly developing industry. When our armies are well equipped and de depots are full of supplies and arms, we will be ready to strike and Russia will come under our fold. Oh, look at that. 45 political power. And coffee for everyone. Let's go ahead and lower corruption. Oh, it only did so much. Well, that is what it is. Severe shortage. They are disloyal. Mm. I wonder if we could do the same events again over there. Well, at least we're high for now. Oh. Oh, the Asuti Crisis. Cool. Uh, we should be able to do this one relatively easily. Pavel. Any upgrades from you, Pavel? Yes. A good one, too. Beautiful, my friends, and then we shall do after that 
Uh, prepare for unification now. I'm going to wait for that one. Develop the city. Let's begin to rebuild the city of Samara. The center of power for our state is important to not merely repair the ruins. We must go even further. The city of Samara will look before the war or the bombing runs began. will look like a small town in front of a newer reborn city. New industries from factories to stores will be built and supported by the government to encourage economic development. Residencies to house more Russian citizens will also be constructed. Our end goal is to make Samara nothing less than a shining beacon of development in West Russia. And good, we just got the next land auction done. So we get more defense, organization, entrenchment, and max planning. And let's grab some more organization and defense. Which would be extremely helpful for the future fight. Wow. Okay, we're not building anything. That's not good. Um, how about there? Are we building anything here? No. Well, bad words. Just a lot of bad words. Retire assumes control. They refuse tribute. Soviet. C'est la vie. I don't know why they refuse tribute like that, but okay. I want to do one of these next, too. I'll probably want to do luxuries for the officers. I don't want to decrease civilian morale. Slightly decrease... Well, they're currently disloyal anyways, so... I guess it doesn't really matter if we do decrease standards. Slightly decrease loyalty. Small decrease in officers. I'll probably do decrease standards. To get more. Because they're already disloyal. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Spoils the war. like to read about this. Go ahead. More stability. War support. Great. And guns. I love guns. Move oversight. Meh. Nah. We need more weapons, though. Develop the city. <clears throat> In which? Rebuilding the future? Yes, please. Our development of our capital city continues smoothly as it continues to grow to levels only seen in the days before the collapse of the Bolshevik regime. It is the duty of the committee to continue this valuable work for the good of the citizens. We will finish the ambitions projects we have embarked on, as we are determined to do so. The city of Samaral shall be the largest and most glorious city in West Russia, a monument to the Committee of National Salvation's government and their work for the common people. An ultimate, the ultimatum from Gorky. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. This happens every campaign when we are doing okay against other warlords. So let's get our soldiers over there, and then we shall refuse their demands and tell them to go bugger off, as some might say. And we still get 50-50. Beautiful. All right, got 10 days. Our guys are almost there. I don't want... Oh, that actually might have some tanks. That's not good. That's really not good. But you know what else is not good? I just ran out of coffee. No, oh, terrible, I know. <sighs> 50 more guns, I love it. Six left. Oh, we got plenty of guns now, yay. Anti-tank is, just, actually it's, it's somewhat difficult to make anti-tank. But that's all right, all right. Let's go ahead and do, you know what? Give them two more days. It's a little slow to get there, but there you go. They do have an IFV, which we probably can pierce. Never mind, we can pierce them. Nice. Very good. Wait, how are we losing? Oh, do they have four? Holy crap. They have four divisions of... Whoa, 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 whoa. How do they have four divisions of that stuff? Uh, let's go with Amateur, just in case. Oh, we don't have enough command power. No! We've been raided, dear God. If you like to read about that, go right ahead. That's stupid. How do they have four tank divisions? What? That That's never happened before. That is beyond stupid. If you like to read about this, go right ahead. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, screw that then. Give me, give me these stupid divisions then. Do, how do we not have enough anti-tank in this thing then? How? What? That's overpowered. That's completely overpowered. Jesus, I need to play as Gorky. Oh, uh, this one though. That is stupid. That is stupid. I'm going to raid the crap out of other people then. I will come back and slaughter them all. Continue lands up. Admittedly, at least between Samar and the other towns and villages under our protection are weak. Of course, the relentless bombing campaign has also been the main reason behind this, and so it is imperative that at the end of the bombings we rebuilt infrastructure. From roads to railways to connect our territories. Old Soviet roads will be repaired and the new ones will be built, always under the funding and supervision of the government. This way, our citizens will enjoy much easier transport, and our garrisons will be able to function better. Screw that. I'm converting these guys to this division. Uh, let's see. How much artillery are we making? How much artillery do we have? Uh, we should have enough to, for some of this at least. There you go. We don't have enough army XP for this anyway, so. Screw those guys. I'll convert the these two divisions to that this one. That'd be better. Now we're going to be out of equipment too, but, you know, what else is new? Screw these people. I will raid them. I will kill every single one of them if I have to. Hmm. Alright, so that's good to know. You don't have to do too much here, but... Oh, what's going on? Ah, who cares. Higher pay? We'll probably do that one. Uh, how about our officers and such, too? 
and help decrease some more corruption. That'd be very good to do. Yeah, that's stupid. That's really just beyond stupid. I will raid your butts. Try it again, Gorky. Try it again. I swear to God, try it again. You son of a gun. We need more manpower. Jesus. We're going to take over the Levant. So be it. And let's go and do this too. Ooh, we still get 50 50. That's not bad. Greatly increase loyalty. There we go. Shortage and they're ambivalent. So that's better. We got more organization, which might be part of the problem that we lost there. Hmm. Connecting our lands, of course. I think I read this one. If not, uh, if I didn't read this one, please go right ahead. I can't even remember now. Oof. Yeah, no, I did. I'm pretty sure I did read that one. Okay. And then, yes. Prepare unification. Which won't even do anything because we can't build anything right now. As the dawn of the war, to the reunification of Russia come closer every day. It is time to make the final preparations to be ready to strike. Our economy is blossoming and as we cautiously plan its growth and the more and more economic enterprises appear for the supporting the city. Now we are in the final stretch before our re reconquest begins. The Samaran government now needs to act carefully and make its last steps before its economy and society change completely, perhaps irreversibly, with the war of reclamation. Gorky, we'll wait against those guys. Tartar Republic. We barely won last time against them. But now with slightly more soldiers, we should do relatively okay, right? Or slightly stronger soldiers. We'll give our guys quite a few days before we actually invade them. Kaya? Cool. Um, let's not go all the way over there, guys. There you go. That'll be good. Get more planning, get more guns, get more everything, really. Artillery's not too bad. Infantry equipment, it's really not that bad, so. Shortage. I think I'm going to wait to lower corruption a little bit more. I would like to do food for the citizens, but by a small amount, by a large amount. Oh, we're already at 60. Uh, high. Can we go super high, maybe? I don't know. I'd like to do this one, though. Uh, did I read this already? I, I'm sorry, I can't even remember now. With every day that passes... Oh, actually, no, we didn't do this one. I already read it was this one. This one was the one. Yeah. Alright, my apologies. I, apparently, my mind is just slipping right now, so... It is what it is. Demote the loyal, disloyal ones. Recruitment campaign, increasing officers. Hopefully they don't get cooed if we do this. Oh, raid them. Might as well. And... Oh, crap. Oh, now let's wait and see what happens. Okay, they paid the tribute. That's good. And they came back. They can come back immediately. Are you kidding me? Okay, so we're going to make sure that our soldiers are they're almost ready for this. And you know what? I'm going to spend it immediately anyways. They're not going to... Even if they win, they're not going to get anything from us. Oh, uh, anything I want to do here? Uh, not really. I kind of want to do more stuff here for these guys. Food for the civilians increased by a large amount. A large amount. So 35, it's still high. Actually, you know, screw it. How we go? Increase the ocean by a smart amount. Very high. Let's see what very high it is. Nice. Even better. Cool. Um, and let's keep it right here for now. Very cool. Get as much organization as possible. You guys should be slightly stronger than before. So this is not gonna go very well. I'm not gonna back down. I refuse to back down. Oh, or maybe, or maybe, you know what? Maybe we can pay tribute. I almost never do this one. And we have no loot, so... Yeah, our soldiers are taking forever to get more organization. There you go. You can have whatever we don't have. <laughs> oh, you pieces of garbage. I will come for you, and I will make sure you are hung up on a, you know, push wire. Shortage, ambivalent. Cool. I guess we'll read the next focus then. Making it better tomorrow. With every day that passes, Samara comes closer to reclaiming its spot on the global stage. Our industry is rapidly growing, with both the military and financial sectors expanding to accommodate the needs of our government and people. Our economy is stabilized, with the people look happy at this, their situation and will work to put food on the table every day. Our army is equipped, trained, and more ready than ever to fight for their fatherland against any enemy that dares to challenge us. We are unstoppable, and the reunification of Russian lands, fractured for decades, is finally on the horizon once again. More daily political power, less consumer goods factories, that's good. Can we actually build anything? Yes, finally, maybe. We'll see what happens. And more equipment. Okay, I definitely want to lower corruption now. And we're very high for this, which is very, very good. So, And can we actually raid anybody else? Oh, we can scan for more loot so people can raid us, which is not a good thing, but hey, whatever. I definitely want to do the other one again. Hmm. 
I don't want to go any higher than average. Maybe we could do this by a small amount. I would like to get more support equipment. I would actually like to get more manpower, but how do we get more manpower? Orotia, let's see. Uh, it's not really worth it. It's 25 or just that much. Military morale. Hmm. Do get slightly more recruitable population factor. Oh, investigate corruption. There we go. Cool. And it's negligible. So that's better. That's that's, that's definitely better for us. Oh, Russian industry. Very good. It's very high civilian morale. Officer shortage. Average corruption. So that's not too... Well, actually, it's still average, huh? So after this, we now we address politics then. Finally, the economy of Samara has been improved and stabilized to an acceptable point. However, with this problem, we might soon be solved. There's another issue to be settled. Think theoretically. The sole governing body of our country is the Konar, a unified committee dedicated to ruling Russia. However, the reality is far from there. Numerous factions compete for control within the committees, each with their own ideas and goals for Samara. Now it's time to bring an end to this. We must end the divisions of factions within the committee and either manage to cooperate with other factions or eliminate them from a position of power. Good, 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 good. A Colossus of Steel, Zykov and Samutin. <clears throat> Share their second bottle of brandy. Stupid smiles plastered on their faces. The two workhorses were completely plastered. The first bottle empty to celebrate the state of the economy. The second to celebrate the first. Leo, Lord Zykov, we've done it. Look at, look at this. Zykov once again lifted up the latest industrial and unemployment records. At the very same that Samutin had furnished him with at the beginning of their meeting. Zykov excitedly flipped through those pages. Profits were up. Employment was low. Job satisfaction and quality of life were at an all-time high. Samutin smiled back in his eyes somewhat unfocused. Like Shaikov, friend, president. We pulled this country out of a real crab, jo crab job. Do you remember when we had bloodlines, strikes every day? And the people ate their cats, said Zykov excitedly. Hands shooting up to the point at the Minister of Economics. My goodness, they were horrible days, but no more. With this, uh, with this Zykov threw his hands open as if to embrace the whole nation of Russia. Russia, it is being born again, a colossus of steel. A chicken in every pot, a shovel in every hand. We're riding into the future in a car made right here in Samara. Laughter, booming, and joyous, erupted around the table. A rarity in Russia for so long. Pure joy irradiated in the room. All in homes all over the new Russia. Fellows sit down to bed with full bellies, warm, warm blankets, and hope for the future. The future is paved in good will and industry. I think. Cool. Yeah, at least we're building something, slightly. Uh, Equipment-wise, nothing not too bad, not too great. And there's something else I wanted to do, I forget. Ooh. Iberian Council, very cool, very cool. Negligible. Um, I kind of want to do maybe some more officer stuff. I would like to get some more equipment in. Let's see. Support equipment is not going up. We don't really need too much of it, though. I want to do one more of these, though. I want to get some more of this. That'd be kind of nice. It feels weird not choosing this stuff for this campaign. It feels a little weird, not gonna lie. Tartar Republic? Why not? Beat him up once again. Maybe. We have slightly more men, maybe, hopefully. Slightly better equipment, hopefully. And we don't have enough command power, obviously, which really sucks. We get point two every day. Oof. Hopefully Gorky went ahead and tried to raid someone else. Alright. Improve oversight luxury gifts for the officers by medium morale. I'd rather do it by a large amount. Eh, we can help them out a little bit. There you go. Slightly more morale for the officers, shall we? Nice. The completed Zykov plan. <clears throat> so, uh, so they're still low for now, but that'll uh, be changed in the future, we shall say. Ah, more equipment. Nice. 19. There we go. And I've already read this, so if you like to read this again, I didn't realize I would wait to get to the bottom stuff earlier. So there you go. And there you go. Let's go on. The people's hope. Oh, we need to lower this too. Uh, there you go. Negligible. That's fine. Any other research? In a month and a half. Hitler's dead. A day to remember. Goodbye, Hitler. And let's see, make use of Lasov, dealing with Oktan. Speak with him. Talk to the Germans. Ooh, army professionalism slowly goes up. German bootleggers with their new military. Yes, I gotta get that immediately. We need some manpower right now. Holy crud. That'd be so good. Ooh, increase civilian morale even by more. Ooh. Dealing with Oktan, though. Our most dangerous opposition consists of the clique of men sent around General Oktan. Many see the collapse of Russia not as a tragedy, but as an opportunity to get rich. Encouraged by the German sponsors, the Oktanite. The Oktanite. 
seek to grind poor Russian citizens into the dirt to extract every ruble of loot from this catastrophe. While we, sh we shall work to prevent the spread of this rot any further, a significant group of officers already think like Octan. We must deal with them, as well as the leftover German influence in the ROA, if we're to shed away our images, unhinged collaborators among the people. Don't you love it when the game almost crashes because the German Civil War spawns or starts? Ugh, gotta love it, right? And there goes Burgundy, and right now, we can prepare a raid against the Tata Republic. Hopefully they say, no thank you, and they give us their stuff. Hopefully, oh, and higher pay for the officers, that's the one we're gonna do immediately next. Oh, they refuse tribute, alright, well. As long as they don't show up here, it will be okay, especially since their organization isn't very high. Military, mor military morale is, of course, very low right now, but whatever. Come on, come on, don't get there soon enough. Please don't get there. Oh, Kazan's right there. Huh, I don't know if Kazan's... Oh, hmm. The bombing stop. Oh, uh, let's see. You know what? I oh, This happens every campaign. If you'd like to read about the bombing stopping, please go right ahead. But to speed this campaign up just slightly more. Okay. It's lagging so hard, I can't do anything about this. Or something. Yeah, it's lagging extremely hard. Man, TNO. Or, now I can move it. Jeez. I, I get worried sometimes, I'll be honest. Like... With the amount of stuff that TNO has to process, like, it, so I've never had a crash, but it's been pretty close sometimes. But if you like to about this, go right ahead, but, my goodness. Yeah, it, I, I hate the, the, the chance that it might just crash. Okay, we, we won. Great. Finally. As we should, right? As we should. Um, and then, let's do worker says, since we're still losing some stuff here, too, so. Alright, voice of reason. And, of course, we want to do dealing with Octan when we get Ender Goods Himmler's England. Very nice. Very nice. Good luck. Good luck. And else, what else do we have here? Uh, nothing really too interesting or needed. Relics of the past. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. We also must think of the future. The machines of the past. Memories of the past. Not bad. Very good. Beautiful. And the people's hope. Militarily, militarily, Zykov stood in his new office in Samara. Just hours ago, he had been proclaimed the deputy chairman of the Russian Liberation Army, a position he had not expected to be elevated to. He and much of the ROA had expected a more military-minded choice. The people of Samara had mixed feelings. The idea of a civilian in charge of the region was certainly appealing to them, but he knew they would still resent it. every member of the ROA. Indeed, he understood that more than most. With luck and no, a small amount of prodding, hopefully they would be, grow to accept the Konar as the best hope for United Russia. Zlykov sat at his desk and began making calls. Vlasov had given him wide latitude to act on his own with all the authority of the chairman himself. Despite his official confirmation as deputy chairman, he knew his position was insecure. The officers under the sway of the dude, Oktan, would have to be either bribed or arrested as their master would undoubtedly be preparing moves of his own. The man was a snake in the grass at the best of times and would have to be dealt with sooner or later. More importantly, Budachenko's clique needed to be brought into the side. They represented the largest part of the ROA and would be the the key to neutering Oktan's support among the enlisted. Even simply securing Sergei's support would go far in stabilizing his, his support in the ROA, as they were none too pleased with the, point, with the appointment of a civilian propagandist. The most important part of Zekov's plans, however, lay with the people who lived under the Konar's rule. They would be the most important to win over by far. Without the support of the people, he would be nothing more than a party petty dictator fighting over the scraps left by the Soviet Union in his death in the death throes. In the long term, he envisioned a true democracy for all the people of Russia, one that would forever bury the legacy of the Tsars and communists in Russia. But such thoughts were for the future. Here in in the here and now, he had to juggle the influence of snakes and soldiers, all in the hope of a future he could be proud of. Best of luck, Deputy Chairman. Uh, before we get too far else, and for, for, before I forget either, other comments. Someone recommends I go monarchist eventually again with like people or nations such as Komarovo or Cheetah sometime. Yes. I should play some monarchists again. I'm not like Alex the Rambler where I only play monarchists. I usually don't play monarchists, but eh, we'll see what happens. Higher pay. Yes, that's good to do. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll play Cheetah sometime. I definitely play Cheetah. Definitely will play uh, Camarobo. Yeah, Rook. I, I was thinking about playing Rook sometime, but just, I just haven't done it yet. Machines of the past. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Oh, we don't have any command power. Maybe with these, Russia will be rebuilt one day. Very cool. Stability and another civilian factory. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. And then someone asked if any South American countries have content. At the time of this recording, I don't believe they do. None of them do, I think. However, and it should be stated, I should probably brought this up before, there's quite a few sub-mods being worked on for TNO, so, uh, yeah, eventually there will be, like, mod, there's one mod, like, Southern Springs, Cold Southern Springs, but Brazil, Argentina, and Chile will have unique focus trees for that sub-mod, which would be really, really cool. I'm re really looking forward to that one. So, Mexico will eventually get a focus tree, of course, so, of course, that's not part of South America, but, you know, whatever. Guiana, probably Venezuela, Colombia. In time. I, I know there's work being done for Nova Polska as well, so... 
I did keep my eyes and ears out for the sub mods that do make their way to the Steam Workshop. Dealing with Octando. And then talk to the Germans. Our German friends in Muscovina and beyond might be busy with their own troubles right now, but the sight of German or Russian reunification on the doorstep is sure to alarm them eventually. We still have worked a little goodwill with the Reich for our, for our work in pushing back the commies and bandits by cashing in every last contempt drenched favor. We can reassure them that they are merely making a preemptive move against the WRRF in turn. German food and supplies will help us secure our rear as we leave Samara and go off to war. More army professionalism, more war support, which we desperately, desperately need, and authoritarian democracy. Let's see, scam Shrew, don't mind if we do. And the issue of Mikhail Oktan. We all know who he is, Zikov began, we all know who's in his pocket. It was true, now that Zakov had assumed control of the Russian Liberation Army, he had real reason to suspect that Oktan, a well-known corrupt officer and reveler, and the less than savory operations undertaken by some of our soldiers, was one of the driving forces behind the instability of following Zakov's ascent to power. But, right now, acting against it would be disastrous. The web he spun himself is far too wide, he controls too much, Zakov concluded, edging out any more of his hawkish supporters and their over-enthusiasm to deal with the individual. But that's not to say, of course, that we should merely leave to him to prepare a coup. He operates on a system that centers around its ability to buy supporters, which means that for a certain price, almost all of them can be bought back. I'd like to have a list drawn up of names we can convince to come over to us, a list of those who likely won't be bought, so that we can begin planning arrest of key figures. We may not be able to take them out yet, but we can whittle them down. Does all that make sense? Aides have been busily writing down the chairman's orders, but all nodded in unison as the chairman looked out for their understanding. Dismissing themselves, they quickly went to work, narrowing down Oaktown supporters and crossing out their lists. Name by name, the Iron Fist. Very good, and we'll grab Infrastructure Reserve. Very good. And someone also recommended, or not recommended, but said in the comments, a few people did, in the comments say, Money, money, money. Aw, yeah. Let's go grab some Industry 2. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's get some better guns. That stuff, that Industrial 1 output, that immediate technology is okay. It's not great. And talk to the Germans with speaking to Octan probably next, because I want to expose the rat. General Octan is a hard, cynical man, unconvinced by the ideal of sharing ROA's power with its citizens. In his little clique lay some of the fiercest opponents toward democratic ideals. Octan himself is both greedy and indispensable. His, his contraband network will be of great assistance to us, and he alone can keep our opponents within the officer's court line. Why not appeal to his greed? By asking him to help us capture all of us in Russia, we can buy off his patience. The rogue general believes us to be an idealistic rabble, and we cannot, and cannot expect us to betray him when the time comes. Oh, but we will. Not bad. Not bad at all. Scavenge for loot. Doing a good job. Neg negligible. Very good. Shortage, of course, but it is what it is. Actually, 20. Oh, we can do some stuff here. Uh, how are we looking for guns? It's slowly getting slightly better. Just slightly, 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 slightly. Let's go two here. We still can't even make other stuff, which sucks. Yeah, I think we... Oh, food for civilians. Not bad. So we're done with the civilian stuff for now. Very high is awesome. Just awesome to have. And just speak with the general, accessing the rot. Oktan and the Germans think us weak-willed and easily subverted once the time comes. Let them dream this, for our own day shall come too. With both factions giving some giving us some leeway, it's time to crack down hard on the corruption within the ROA. Any German bandit or smuggler caught aiding this blight on the people will be publicly shot. Junior officers, common soldiers, and citizens, a victim to predation in the past, will be compensated. By shedding the image of a decaying German junta even further, we can, in time, earn the respect of our citizens. Nice. Get less factory output, but that's okay. Decrease corruption by a large amount. Yes, please. Sign us up. If that's the case, I don't mind even, maybe even buying more goods, or maybe we should get some more monthly stuff. Can we do anything up here yet? No. Hmm. Hmm. Corruption. If it's going to go down anyways, I kind of mind getting some anti tank every month then. It's currently average. That's fine. Whatever. I'm a little bit more interested in what we can do up here. Yeah, I just wish we had more equipment. I wish we had more men. That's probably the biggest thing for us. I love the men. We need more of the men. And look at all that lag. The Jurian War. Oof. My goodness. Lag central. Hey, but equipment's looking pretty good, though. Seriously. This lag is almost unbearable. TNO, man, you need to have a good computer to run this. Oof. Can we do anything else up here? Oh, we could eventually. Oh, wait. We need uh, Orenburg. That's at least one money, money, treasure. Oh, Islamic Republic of Bashkurdistan. Why not? And then we shall do, make use of Vlasov. 
Increase civilian. Dealing with a general. Yeah, let's go dealing with general first. General Bulinichenko and his fellow officers do not oppose us with the same virulence as what well as the clique does. However, our program is so unpopular with the officers, many accuse us of selling out the hardworking men of the ROA for ungrateful rabble that has done nothing but depict us as cowardly collaborators. Fortunately, we have reason to think that there is some honor and patriotism among the officers outside Oktan's group. The officers, Klik and Bunachenko, agree with us that we need a large, or at least a small amount of popular support if we're going to succeed. We must convince them that offering a democratic Russia is the best, best path forward. Now we must coerce Bunachenko. Zaykov and a number of his more prominent allies sat in one of the many formal conference rooms common to the governmental buildings that doubted Samara, now that he had begun to grab a hold on the reins of power. He knew that he had addressed one of the two elephants in the crowded metaphorical room. Sergei Bunachenko, the mouthpiece for the officers. Bunachenko had been one of the Vlasov's competing successor, meaning that he had enough clout and influence to pose a real threat to Zykov's plans, if he so wished. They had scheduled an impromptu meeting with the general, and he was running late. The doors creaked open as Bunachenko gracefully stepped through. His uniform was disheveled and his eyes were bloodshot. It looked as if he had been drinking, at the very least, just last night. If not into the morning as well. Good morning, I apologize for my tardiness, Bunachenko said it. I just lost track of time when I... Zekov interrupted. It doesn't matter. We've called you here because we want to discuss your future with the Russian Liberation Army. Bunachenko's eyes widened. Don't worry, we're not having you shot. Just one of the officers chimed in. Zekov glanced at his peer dismissively before turning to Bunachenko once more. No, I suppose we aren't. You represent something that is of value to me, Sergei. Zekov asserted. You have the ear of the people we need to hear, and who need to be heard by us? The way I see it, we'll keep you around with a generous salary. Not only will you remain at the head of the armed forces, but you also report directly to us about any going on in the army that needs to be reported on. Does it make sense? A short curt nod from the general followed, and he was dismissed. The Velvet Glove. And right now we're rating of the Islamic Republic of Bashkurdistan, so. And we shall do what? Oh, speak to the committee. The officers' committee is an important asset in a crusade to liberate Russia. The officers themselves hate the commies and Germans for getting us in this mess. Why not appeal to their patriotism as well as their ambition? Well, it is true that our plan is to eventually give back some power to the common man. The officers of the ROA will still be better off as respected elder statesmen of a strong united Russia than as petty princes in a backwater military junta. Surely it is an acceptable trade, no? And we this have to do, we have 30 stuff here, very high, because the Germans in the Civil War are smuggling in the network, it's only at 40% efficiency, which isn't great, but I did click on the one that gave us some more anti-tank, or more support equipment, I should say. Yeah, we got more support equipment. Oh, now true Republic of Finland. What's going on up here? Oh. Oish. Ah, we raided successfully. Great. Seize all that we can use. Boy, boy, no. And next we shall do schools, research facilities, agricultural methods. Well... Let's do research facilities so that at least everything is going up at least a little bit besides the poverty rate. Yep, everything's going up, so research facilities it is. Thank you. Raid and pro Oh, yeah, raid and progress. That's good. Nice. Done with that. And because we have average uh, corruption, we're going to go ahead and lower it some more if possible, or we only have five, so there you go. It is a negligible, which is very good, very high, and somewhat low. And next up, I will probably do the one for this stuff down here. But regardless, speaking with Bonachenko. Oh, food for hungry. Cool. If you like your brothers, go right ahead. General Bulinichenko is long established as a mouthpiece of the officers' committee. However, it also suspected that his ap apathy hides secret dreams of a new Russia, one able to punish the Germans and Bolsheviks both. Even more important is his influence within the officers' corps, as his years of dedicated service have made him a popular, non-controversial figure. It is thus crucial that we begin talks with him and attempt to bring him closer to our democratic aims. This will be a long ordeal, and one that may never fully succeed. However, convincing him to ask the officers committee to give us a chance is an easily attainable first step. Not bad. I would like to raise military morale. Warlord development, we're not focusing on it at all, and no one wants to beat us up yet. So, let's save our political power, and I want to lower corruption very soon. And bureaucratic allies. Very cool. I wonder how high we can get our military morale, which would be pretty good. We know not if Bunachenko or our other officer contacts upheld their end of the bargain. What is known, however, is the cooperation with the officers' committee has been going on a lot smoother recently. It is now time for this cooperation to trickle downwards and reassure the fighting men that Zykov will lead them to honor, glory, freedom, as well as a decent salary bonus. After all, a poorly organized and poorly motiva motivated army is no army at all. Oh, we have another division. Look at that. We've been getting more and more manpower so that we get more division. Very nice. And are we here yet? No, god dang it. Why is it so long? It takes so, take so long to do that. Oof. I don't mind raising up corruption a little bit more because we currently get 30, 45, and 15. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's not great. It's, it's only a 40% efficiency. Alright. I, I don't want to... Ooh, what, we have another division too? Oh, look at that. Nice. Beautiful. There you go. Uh, we can do one of these. Let's see. Decrease standards. Shortage. Decrease loyalty. 
I don't really want to decrease loyalty though. Increase in officers. Increase loyalty. Decrease civilian morale by a little bit. Well, we're gonna get a big old boost, aren't we? That's military morale, but let's see. Increase civilian mor morale by a little small amount, which will be okay. Let's try it. It's still very high, so that's okay. And they're loyal. They're loyal. That's good. It's good to have loyal people in charge, right? Always good. After bureaucratic allies, we'll be making use of Vlasov. Whatever can be said about him, one cannot deny that Vlasov is indeed a significant person in the thousand-year-old Russian history. A living myth who will be remembered along such figures as Alexander Nevsky and maybe even Peter the Great for his decisiveness to rise against the tyranny and lead the Russian people into a new, freer future. As befits any true historical hero, Vlasov's biography is full of wrongful and controversial decisions and many appreciate him or deprecate him for his mistakes, but they will not be the judges of the motherland's history. The stagnation of the internal affairs in Samara caused many people, including both the elite of the committee and the Ru common Russian folk, to turn on General Vlasov for his alleged apathy to the needs of Russia and his inability to govern the KONR. But his authority among the new Russian government is indisputable. Combined together, Vlasov's supreme power and his backing of Zakov's democratic reformist bureaucrats will become a battering, battering ram, which will break down the discontent of the KONR and will open a way to the true reforms we wish to see enacted. Very good. And so forth. Okay, whatever. Anything up here? Yes, we must scavenge for loot. Now I feel confident that we can beat anyone up who wants to fight us as well. Are we still mobilizing? Yes, we are. Very good. A couple comments. Someone wrote, people want me to play as a general still. Like, there's a new comment for after I began recording this episode, uh, which is good that I do fade in, fade out, just because I like to read other comments that people wrote, um, just in case I miss them initially. So, uh, yeah, I'll play as, I promise I'll play as a general sometime. Not sure when, but eventually. Oh, actually, m military morale is average. That's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, renewed, mi renewed military trust. Maybe that's it. There you go. Very high civilian morale. Not bad. Officer shortage, which, we, like I said, I do want to fix up. But I'm just waiting for that one that, that's, that's actually really good for us, so. But we got to wait. Anything else up here? Nope. No one wants to raid me? Come on. Oh, Cedos selected president. I don't think... Have I ever seen Pierre Cedos? Huh. Okay, cool. Que la France éternelle se souvient de ton hair. Whatever that means. France is not yet lost? I don't know. Hmm, negligible, huh? You know what? I want to see how far we can go with this. Bribe German officers, increase a variety of goods. It's average, you know. Oh, look at this. You got even more here. So, smuggling shipments. Military morale. I'll make use of Vlasov. Large amount. Military morale. Very high for us. Oh, smuggle motorized. Ooh, kind of like that. You know what? We have 41. Oh, wait, hold on. Higher pay? Yes, that's good. Uh, even though it doesn't look like it gives us anything. The power of the radio. Radio is the cheapest way to reach every soldier and citizen wherever they may be. By launching new programs that mix entertainment and education, you can better inform the people of the currently unfolding democratic revolution. Deputy Chairman Zakov is known for his oratorical skill and propaganda work. Let us use this asset to diminish the influence of untruth and deception across our land. We propose to go faster. Zakov has been a busy man. Zavasov was a man of immense power, and that was undeniable, but the problem was that he had a distant distinct lack of will to utilize that power. Always concerned about maintaining the coalition above else. Even at the expense of Samara and the people of Russia as a whole now, though. Zakov was the one in charge, at least for now, and he had more than utilized it. Vlasov had many friends, his, his enemies had many divisions. It was child's play, bouncing them back and forth using the bureaucracy, benefiting one at the expense of the other. And all the while, Zakov was promoting allies to the levels of power, the keys to a better future, both in the community and in government. Nothing big, a secretary position here, a sub-department headship there. All an intricately connected web of connect connections and friends that, when the time came, would remember who helped them and their families. And then there was the people, the broken, shattered remnants of a once great country. They hated the committee, and rightfully so. They were, after all, a bunch of German bootlickers, at, for now at least, but they would learn in time to rely on them. The bare bones of a welfare state with regular drops of food and protection and a general upgrade in their standard of living would keep them satisfied, especially after experiencing almost 20 years of deprivation. But this was just the setting of the stage. The actors would be brought together. The probes created. All that, re or the probes created. All that remained, or all that remained, was a script with Zakov as a writer. And Zakov wanted to go faster. There are decades where nothing happens, and there are weeks where decades happen. Very cool, my friends. Very cool. I want to beat people up. Can I beat people up? I just want to beat people up. Please let me beat people up. Oh, look at this. Bureaucratic allies. I love it. And we can only get one and a half political part every day. I love that a lot. And a renewed spirit. A cautious optimism has descended on Samara. Of course, oh, has the ROA always been this popular? Of course it has. Then why are the memories of Chairman Vlasov hated? Vile rumors. Of course, caused by the actions of vile underlings that have been 
long judged by the renewed ROA. Like the good Tsar led astray by his wicked boyars, Vlasov has come to dispense justice and help the people of Samara. Of course, the only gullible minority preach this gospel. For the rest of the population, the ROA simply managed to emerge renewed from its stagnation after the end of the German bombing. Curious about where we are going with this, and too cynical to oppose this violently in a chaotic uh, effort of, at rebellion, our good citizens are themselves beginning to emerge out of their apathy. Very good. Oh, we can beat people up. Uh, Bashkurdistan? Uh, I like I like beating these Bashkurdis up. Oh, they're also getting raided as well. Oh, that might not happen then for us. Ooh, ROA officer stuff, shortage. At least they're loyal. That's the most important thing, that they are loyal. Oh, we're back in 90. Nice. And actually, what does this one give us? Increase civilian morale by a large amount. And we remove turncoat general, which will be great. We get slightly more population. Recovery rate for divisions goes up, way up and 20 more war support nice so if that's okay um approve oversight i don't mind hurting civilian morale a little bit more but just because we'll get it a little higher decrease civilian civilian increase corruption which i don't like smuggle even more trucks actually we don't even get trucks right now i don't really care about trucks too much though to be honest increase military morale decrease 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 Increase civilian morale, civilian morale, civilian morale. That's a lot of civ civilian morale stuff. Uh, let's see. Well, one of these was civilian morale too, wasn't it? Increase corruption. Hmm. All right. Well, we don't have one right now. I don't want to raise that too high. Uh, let's see. Efficiency is forty percent. What are we lacking? Guns. I I don't want to get any more guns and artillery. That's probably more important. Art uh, guns. There you go. Forty. So be it. Awesome. We'll get 45 guns every month. Not bad. Now begin the unification with our internal situation under control. We must now begin our wars of unification. No longer mere hunting dogs for the German. We are the ROA. We must proudly accept their destiny as liberators of Russia. If every Russian is to live free of fear and oppression, then we must not fail. Soldiers, citizens, onwards. More war support. And for two years, we get more uh, organization, less recruitable population factor. More attack and division recovery rate. I don't like losing attack, though. That's probably one of the biggest things. I definitely don't want to lose attack. Now we're very high at 100. Very good. It's average. Begin rating. we got to get more equipment. Good. Let them refuse tribute. Hey, we got a little bit more manpower now, too. Nice. And by doing this, we get some guns, too. Hopefully out of this. Especially when they don't have any divisions there, too. And are they going to show up, or are they just going to just going to sit here and play games with them? Well, I guess we can increase this a little bit. That's fine. There we go. An adequate number. Great successful. If you like to do this, about this, go right ahead. Great. Now we can go grab some, even some more equipment. Oh, what's going on here? There you go. Now I'm not sure who we're going to attack first. Oh, good. Gorky and these people are killing each other. I love that. I love that idea. The spoils of war. Great. More stability, more war support. We're doing really well right now. Maybe this is a little easier than I thought it would be. Uh, early on, it just seemed like, especially after the defeat at the hands of Gorky, we weren't doing great. So. Begin the unification and then tactical expansion. Our wars of liberation must be carefully considered. The ROA stands alone and is widely detested in the region. By beginning with weaker foes, we can liberate a sizable amount of land before striking at the Tsar and Vyatka and the communists in Arkhangelsk. We must move at a good pace without rushing too much. Now I can't scavenge for more new stuff. And that's okay. Uh, scale down smuggling stuff. Now we're good. Begin unifications, of course. Beautiful, my friends. I do want to lower that uh, corruption, so. Well, let's save it for 40 political power, if possible. Scavenger stuff. No, no, no. And, oh. It did not come back. Okay. Tactical expansion. The, oh, Tartarstan does not exist. Just across the border and land of the Tartars, there exists a city of Jebolkarsi. In the city, there live thousands of Russians, governed by a population or pe people who do not, who are not of their own. <clears throat> Among our populace, there is much sympathy for this minority, sympathy that can, with a few stories of oppression and tragedy, be turned into support for military intervention. It is most unfortunate that the first step on the road of, to a reunified Russia must be involved the use of such underhanded and harsh methods, but, as the Tartars shall see us as fascist stooges, they would never consent to a peaceful union. Even so, we must never lose sight of our ideals, and we can rest assured that this is being done in the name of the future of Russia. More manpower and more support once we get this done. And that's Tartar Stan, eh? So be it. Oh, we got quite a bit here. Nothing up here, so be it. Nothing down there either. Nothing down there either. All right then. 
Not bad. Tartar stand. Which one's Tartar stand? Oh, Tartar stand. Oh, it's this group. Reports on militia activity. Very nice. If you do that appropriately, thank you very much. Let's do this. Do that. De Vlasov, are you still here? No. Yes, you are. Good. We'll use we'll him. Deputy Chairman Zekovas uh, requested your report on militia activities throughout our territory. Local militias have always been a fact of life in the Russian anarchy. As you know, even with a professional army such as ROA, we cannot cover every mile within our territory. As a result, local villagers often organize to defend and protect their community. Per your instructions, we have sought increased partnership with these militias as a counterbalance to the ROA. Our rivals within the officers' committee will pose the threat of a military coup against our democratic efforts. As such, it is useful to possess our own military deterrent. Of course, the balance must not be allowed to swing the other way. Local militias might feel emboldened to resist our central government. As such, there are permanent efforts to assess the loyalty of each militia, placing men or domestic democratic faction as officers and as many militias as we can. It would certainly be a tragedy if we had a few loyal militias against the rogue military elements or vice versa. Yeah, we must be prepared for any eventuality if our project is to succeed. Excellent report, officer. I was going to double check. Yes, exactly why I double check. Nothing there and nothing there, so be it. And the Russians of this place. And maybe we'll finish off with one more. Uh, focus, right? The trash of Tartars? Nice. Our uh, propagandists have worked, perhaps too well, but that's an issue for another time on the narrow border of the Tatar Stan. Or Tatar Stan. Stand our divisions. Poise a strike and begin to march to Chebo Cheboksari. The men are eager and in higher spirits, with some of the more particularly enthusiastic among them stockpiling massive weapons of vodka, massive amounts of vodka, to hand out to their fellow Russians as soon as the city is liberated. All these bodes well for a quick and efficient end of the war, before too much blood is shed, before the anger we have fostered against our enemies grows into outright hatred. All that's still needed is Zekov's word, and once it is given, the offensive, and the beginning of the unification of Russia will commence. Very nice. Very, very good, actually. And we should begin with a furious attack. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, more shipments. Boop. Oversight. I do want to lower that, though. Oof. Smuggle some more stuff. I, do, I want to lower the corruption. I just want to lower it. Adequate number. And they're loyal, which is just good, 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 good. Uh, let's see. Slip leash, of course. Adequate officers. Wow, look at that manpower. Nice. Adequate officers. And trash the Tartars. Why not? They deserve it, right? And do we have another one down here already? Demote loyal. Slight decrease of loyalty. Increase in officers. Bribe royal officers. Rival officers. Increase corruption. Anything up north here? No, not really. Mm, big sadness. Big, big sadness. Military morale I do want to increase, but... I mean, 25 political power. Decrease it by 5. Not really worth it. Ooh, do we get something else? Oh, we can do these guys again. Well... Uh, as much as I'd love to do this, we're about ready to go to war. So, let's wait just a little bit. Yeah. We'll go to war, raid, have a good time, get rid of a few people here and there, and, you know, do what must be done, as some might say. Too bad we can't raid against the Tartar Republic, that'd be kind of nice. And we've got five days left, and then the Tata Horseman. Well, we got to read this stuff once we own all three places. Two days. Come on, come on. I want to, I want to go to war. I want to do it. There we go. And we can investigate corruption too. Great. Or does? Cool. Negligible. And actually, uh, we can do that one down there too. Uh, decrease civilian morale. Well, it's already very high, so we might as well do that one, right? Increase loyalty. Uh, there we go. Completely loyal. And we're at 95. So that's really not bad at all. Oh, uh, with you guys, you guys go there, there, there. Just cut these guys off. That'd be the best thing we could possibly do. Thank goodness for trucks. Thank goodness. And once that'll spare us a few more divisions, which would be nice. Very good. Uh, yeah, just let them do whatever they're doing. Kazan shall be ours soon. And there goes JFK. I thought I literally just thought that. J um. The dude just, like, resigned. J, not JFK. Nixon, I can't remember his name for some reason. Ah. And after that, we shall have one more focus. And they're, they're gone. Great. And we shall conclude with a Tata Horseman. Well, 
Well, do that our rights. Following our conquest, the Tatars have found their position reversed. They're now a minority in a nation primarily made up of Russians. Currently, the attitude towards them in Samara is merely ambivalent, but with the stories, real or imagined, of Chebosari still fresh in the minds of our people, this could quickly take a turn for the worse. In order to both rectify the situation and stay true to the ideals of the democratic Russia, Zakov has therefore proposed that the rights of the Tatars be Tatars be codified into law. They're now our people just as much as any Russian, and we have an obligation to treat them just as well. Once these rights are enshrined on paper, the woes of the past war will hopefully be forgotten, and the Slav and Tartar will be able to walk hand in hand towards a better future, but I hope you enjoyed today's episode, my friends. Wow, we got a lot of authoritarian democracy. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and we will watch the German Civil War conclude with either Bowman or Goring winning. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.